الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء المرسلين سبحانك لا علمنا لا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected brothers, sisters, elders and the Muslim community at large I pray and hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept every listener in the best of Iman and the best of health. Truly, these times that we're going through are times which are dark, which are very trying, which are a time when you really need to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us may be feeling extremely grieved at this moment, sad, that subhanAllah, we're not able to attend the Salat al-Jum'ah, go to the Masjid, we have missed this Jum'ah, the past Jum'ah, the Jum'ah before that as well, SubhanAllah. The Muslims are so connected to the day of Jum'ah as something that we all look forward to. Even a person, SubhanAllah, that doesn't normally come to the Masjid, is not attached to the Masjid, doesn't attend the programs in the Masjid, but yet, on the, when the day of Jum'ah comes, irrespective of where he may be, whatever work he may have, he will make some time and make a schedule such that, you know what, I need to make it to Salat al Jum'ah. I need to make it to the Masjid. That's one gathering that I'm not going to miss. Many of us may be thinking, Ya Allah, we are missing out on that reward which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified for this day, which Rasulullah says that a person on the day of Jum'ah does ghusl, takes a shower, and then after that he puts on perfume and oils himself and walks to the Masjid. For every step that he takes, subhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him the reward of an entire year. One step, entire year. Qiyamuha wa siyamuha, fasting of it and praying, subhanAllah. And we should be crying and saying, Ya Allah, we have been deprived of this. But let us understand something. If we look at the annals of history, we will see that Islam didn't always have the day of Jum'ah. It was a privilege that was granted to us, to Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's understand for a moment before we continue, that this day of Jum'ah was something special. It was not something that was granted to every single Muslim that ever lived on the face of the earth. The Ummah of Adam alayhi wa sallam did not have it. The Ummah after that did not have it. The Bani Israel, who are known to be a sacred nation, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed many gifts. He gave us that food from the heavens for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them signs that he never showed any other nation. He saw, showed them a camel coming out of the mountain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them a person being revived from the dead. But yet, this day of Jum'ah was not granted to them. This day of Jum'ah was granted to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In hadith narrated of Huraira radiallahu anhu, which is in Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that Adullah Allahu alayhi wa sallam fi man kan qablana. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala diverted every other nation away from the day of Jum'ah, every other nation before us. Fakana al-Yahudu, fakana al-Yahudi yawm al-Sab. For the of Saturday for themselves. وَكَانْ نَصَارَ يَوْمُ الْأَحَدِ And the Nasara or the Christians had the Sunday for themselves. فَجَاءَ اللَّهُ بِنَا Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us. فَهَدَانَ اللَّهُ الْيَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us to the day of Jum'ah. فَجَعَلَ الْجُمْعَةَ وَالسَّبْتَ وَالْأَحَدَ وَكَذَلِكَ هُمْ تَبَعٌ لَنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Jum'ah day of Jum'ah for us and made the other days for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as Saturday and Sunday comes after the day of Jum'ah in the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the day the dust of the nations to come after us on the day of the judgment when we will be going into Jannah no other nation can go into Jannah till we we the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu the chosen nation enter Jannah and then only every other nation will be able to enter Jannah subhanallah this is a fadilah that was granted to us but today 
we are sitting at homes. After Rasulullah Sallallahu had performed Jum'ah, after Rasulullah Sallallahu has prescribed the day of Jum'ah for us, yet we are deprived from it. We have to sit at home and we are not able to attend the day of Jum'ah. A day of Jum'ah on which we could have socialized, met our Muslim brothers, hugged our Muslim brothers, said salam to our Muslim brothers. Now, let us think for a moment, what caused this decline? What caused this? Yes, a person may say it's just a sickness, it's just a virus which Allah subhanahu wa sent out. It is a test, but tests don't come for any reason. If we see the time of Fir'aun, as Allah subhanahu wa talks about the Bani Israel, Bani Israel were an oppressed nation. And you could say that today the Muslims around the world are also an oppressed nation. And maybe as Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned in the hadith, when you ask about the Ta'un, Rasulullah sallallahu says, إِنَّهُ عَذَابٌ يَبْعَثُهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَشَاءُ That indeed it is a punishment which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends upon whomsoever He wills. And He has sent it as a punishment because of the oppression being caused upon the Muslims around the world. Maybe some person had made a dua. One person and maybe Syria. One person maybe in Palestine. Maybe a person in China. Anywhere in the world. One person being oppressed, maybe person in India made dua that, Oh Allah, I as a Muslim, I believe in you. I am part of the Ummah of Rasulullah Wasallam. I believe in Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah. I'm being oppressed today. Maybe he made that dua and in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided, you know what? These people need to be punished. It is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what have we as Muslim done to prevent this? In the hadith for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, the army will come. The army will come. And every one of that person whom will be part of that army will be destroyed. They'll be swallowed by the earth. They'll be involved in that punishment. So Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, that what if there's some people amongst them who are not part of the army? They're just part, they're with the army to benefit um, in terms of um, being socially with them, maybe to earn something. Rasulullah says that no, the, from the first till the last, everyone will be included within that punishment. And on the day of judgment, they shall be raised according to their intention. We living in America especially, we living within this world where so many wrongs are happening. Yes, maybe our intentions are true and right. Maybe we are here with the correct intention to invite the disbelievers in this country towards Islam to show them the teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But yet we live amongst them. And we may be involved in that punishment as well. But let us understand for a moment, as Muslims, are we really living as Muslims? That today we have been deprived by... Uh, um, from socializing. Remember, socializing is a ni'mat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Socializing is a ni'mat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu encourages our socializing. Rather, commands our socializing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhin amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. That, O oh people, have patience, encourage patience. When the Rasulullah tells us to visit the sick, when the Rasulullah says to make salam common amongst ourselves, when the Rasulullah tells us to go and see to other people's needs, when the Rasulullah says in the hadith that we just narrated yesterday after Maghrib, the Rasulullah says that it is more beloved to me that I go and assist a Muslim to fulfill his need than for me to sit in i'tikaf for a whole month. And the Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more beloved to me. Isn't Rasulullah sallam encouraging socializing? But within the socializing, Rasulullah sallallahu has taught us some etiquettes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set some boundaries. Now, within the socializing, have we kept to those boundaries? Have we kept to those etiquettes of socializing? How many times we come to the Masjid? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that spread salam to ala man ta'rif wa man lam ta'rif. Say salam to the person you know and who you don't know. You come to the masjid, we don't look at anyone else. We just go straight to the person we know and say salam to him and walk out. We have so many Muslim faces around us. Are they not my Muslim brother? Hasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, innam al-mu'minun ikhwa? That the believers are brothers? Don't they deserve our salam and our peace from our sides? 
doesn't a Muslim Brotherhood Second Hospital, whether we know him or not, deserve our visitation? When was the last time I visited them? SubhanAllah. We say that we are social. We're on social media the whole day. But SubhanAllah, my own father and mother in, the, in my own house has been kept away from my socialization. I'm on my, on my device socializing with people who I've never met and may never meet. Watching videos of people who I never met will never meet and possibly will not lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet, my own father that's in my own house, he's sitting in front of me, she's sitting in front of me. I do not say salam to them. I do not talk to them. They wish to cool their hearts, to cool their eyes by my speech. But I sit over there and I'm looking onto my phone. My own child might be sitting in front of me, but yet I'm giving more attention to my phone and my device than I'm giving to my own children. On this part of etiquette of socializing. On the other hand, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricts us from socializing in certain manners, that means, for example, Allah subhanahu wa says, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنْ That, O believing men, lower your gazes. Do not look at other women. When we tell, Allah subhanahu wa tells the woman, lower your gazes, do not look at other men. وَحْفَظْنَا فُرُوجَهَنْ What do we do? We have social gatherings in which there is no consideration for um, gender um, separation. Why? When the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we do not obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then truly a time will come when this, this ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we used to take for granted will be taken away. And then we will think, Ya Allah, a time will come that you know what? I can't go see my own friend, my own Muslim brother. I want to go visit the sick, but we have been banned from going to the hospitals. I, have been, I want to go say salam to my Muslim brothers, but I cannot go and visit him. I want to go to the masjid and socialize with the Muslims, but I cannot do so. I as a sister want to visit my Muslim sisters. I cannot do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away from us. And when we meet, did we used to encourage each other on Islam? Do we think that this is the only social distancing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta that, uh, that, that will happen to us? Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about social distancing in the Quran. Did you know that? Did you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about social distancing in the Quran? There's few different aspects I want to talk about in terms of social distancing in the Quran. One place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the social distancing in the Quran in Surah Al-Abbas and Surah Al-Ma'arij where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day of judgment and we all come together. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That that day we will not be forced to distance ourselves from each other but by choice we will run away from each other. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يَغْنِي a person will go away from his own father. A person will distance himself from his own mother. A person will distance himself from his own wife. A person will distance himself from his own children. Today at least we get to live within our own homes with our own children and our parents, whomever we socialize with every single day. Let us think for a moment. On that day, on the day of judgment, we will want to socially distance ourselves from each other so much. Even the most beloved people, the people we are allowed to be with today, will not want to be together. And the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يسألوا حميم حميمة that a close friend will not ask about another close friend. Today at least we can pick up our phones and ask about each other. Have you ever considered that? So let us do such things which on that day will bring us together. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الْمُتَّقُونَ or إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ Accept those people, those people who were fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the ayat of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> that beware of those people who are, or rather stay away from those people in spite of them being your family, your fathers, your brothers, your ashira, your family, people you socialize with. Because why? They are things that will keep you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if any one of them, whether it's your parents, whether it's your brothers, whether it's your siblings, whether it's your, um, your business, 
whether it's your homes, kick it away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِي Then wait for the moment when the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. At that moment, even if you want to use those people to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that moment will be gone. That opportunity will be gone. And the time has come when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the opportunity away from us to socialize. But remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith that is said in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that He has made this moment a mercy for us. Rahmatan lil mu'mineen for the believers. Why? Because a believer is a person. وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرُونَ وَلَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ That do not become despondent of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because the opportunity seems dark, because the situation seems a moment where we cannot go back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, this is a moment where you can take full benefit. Because you are a believer. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited. There is no limit to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even within this moment, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited. You just have to place yourself in a place where the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending. You may be stuck in your homes. But remember, your homes can be a place where the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending. Before I continue to there, continue there, I want to bring everyone's attention to two times in history, which we shall we should remember, because those were moments in which Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum truly suffered. And many a times we hear about these times, but we can't picture them. There was a time within the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was in Mecca. Before he came to Medina, before Islam became a, proper, a prosperous um, religion, before Islam became one of the most powerful religion, a time when Rasulullah and a few of the Sahaba were alone. A time when Rasulullah was being forced to hide his Islam. A moment he was, could not come out of his home, not because the Sahaba radiallahu anhum could not come out of their homes or practice their religion openly, not because they're fearful of some disease, but rather they're fearful of their own relatives. A moment when a person had to pray salah within the confines of his own homes and could not proclaim his Islam, because if he came out of his house and people came to know that he was a Muslim, people would take out sticks out and shoes off and start beating them. A time when a person, when he would proclaim his Islam, would be beaten and would be thrown on the sand, and be thrown rocks at. Why? Because he was a Muslim. A moment when the Rasulullah Sallallahu because of proclaiming Islam and telling them what was right and what was wrong, and telling them about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, was pelted with stones. At that time, it wasn't a disease, but rather it was a proclamation of Islam. And as it carries on, there was a time worse than that. A time when the entire Quraysh decided to put Rasulullah and the Sahaba Kiram عنهم, within a valley and completely boycott them, knowing there were people who could help them. At this moment, we know that any person we might see might not be able to help us, could be harmful to us because of the disease, not because of choice. No, by choice those people had boycotted Rasulullah Do you understand how painful that was to Rasulullah Sallallahu The Rasulullah completely boycotted, couldn't meet his own family members. He was not being given food. At least now, if we're not being, we can't we can get food ourselves. People outside, we can't go to the grocery store. There are people willing to come to our homes and deliver that food for us. There are people who feel bad for us. At that moment, that same family that had called Rasulullah and Amin and Sadiq were ready to boycott Rasulullah and to extend that. And one of the Sahaba Kiram anhum relates that we were at a condition that one night I went to relieve myself. And when I went to relieve myself, what happened was that as I was about to urinate, I felt my foot 
step on something. And I felt quickly what that was. And he realized it was a skin, dried skin, dried leather. He says, I took it back and cleaned it out and put it between two rocks and heated it up until it was something that I could chew. And I chewed it and ate from that. Subhanallah, we're not in that condition. We still have our families with us. We have food with us. And we're still in the condition we can go to grocery stores and buy food for us. I just want to use this moment to remind ourselves that there were times when Rasulullah suffered way more than what we are going through today. And subhanAllah, we don't have to go through the annals of history if we just think about the people in Palestine. We have to look at, uh, think about the people in Syria, people that were, the people in Burma, the people that are in Kashmir. Every one of them had to suffer these kind of, this kind of fate every single day of their life. Without the coronavirus. Without the coronavirus. Today, we have a disease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us to send as a reminder. So respected brothers, sisters, elders, children, youngsters, every person that's listening, take this moment to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not make this a moment to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us a bounty of socializing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala snatched it away from us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to realize what socializing truly is. That socialize as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to socialize. Socialize keeping the etiquette of socializing in mind. Meet every single Muslim brother. Do not have any ill feelings towards another Muslim brother. Do not harm another Muslim brother. To meet, make salam to every single Muslim brother whether he know him or not. Now I want to end off with a few things that we can do within our homes. In hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us with regard to hadith which Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu relates that a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked Ya Rasulullah who is the most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the most beloved deed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So remember, we're sitting in our homes right now. And every one of us should be thinking that what can cause me to become from amongst those people who are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa replies that the most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a person who's beneficial to another person. So we're sitting within our homes and thinking that how can I benefit another person? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has told us any person, he does not say that there has to be a person out of our home. Do we not have our parents within our homes? Do we not have our children within our homes? Do we not have our siblings within our homes? Can't we assist them? We as children, can we assist our mothers in, their ch in the chores of the homes? Can we assist our mothers in whatever other duties of the house they have? Can we not assist our father in terms of the work he, that he has? Can we not uh, assist our siblings in maybe even the homework that they have? There's a need that they have. And more than that, can we not assist our siblings and our parents in recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Instead of sitting on that device of ours which will take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was, will make us more worried and causes depression. No, let's leave those things. Let's go to the Muslims within our homes and help them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then make us from amongst the most beloved of people. The second thing was the most beloved deed. Again, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the most beloved deed is that you can cause happiness to the heart of another Muslim brother. Since this whole thing happened, very few of us have picked up a phone. Yes, we have been been, been deprived of the opportunity to go visit another Muslim brother. But how many of us have picked up the phone and called another Muslim brother and asked him, "Brother, how are you doing? How's the family doing?" Is there anything I can help you with? Just a phone call truly makes another Muslim brother's heart happy. 
A third thing I want to emphasize today, because we are doing a lot of social distancing, a lot of me who are taking a lot of precautions to distance ourselves from each other, and precautions to save ourselves from the disease. But truly, what are the things that will cause the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend upon us? In the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, with regard to the day of Jum'ah, which we are in today, right now, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or rather, Rasulullah sallam says, that one of the reasons that the Muslim Ummah were cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was a person who takes the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and does not say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a person who mentions and loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy depends upon him, descends upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayat of the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحِبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ That if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if you want to be a true believer, then what do you have to do? Love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anyone else. Today is the day of Friday. And today, our salawat is presented to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the bodies of the Anbiya alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam are not allowed to decay. They are kept as they are in their qubur. That our salawat are conveyed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should send abundant salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Respected brothers, sisters, and every person listening. Remember, let us use this opportunity to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most pleased with us. And I'll leave everyone with this last thing that let's give as much sadaqah as possible in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He tells us that one of the ways of getting rid of bala, that means tests and trials, is to give sadaqah. And the more we give, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes pleased with us. Why? Because we are removing the love of the dunya from our hearts and bring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within these trying moments. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reopens the masajid for us. He opens those opportunities for us where we can re uh, meet and socialize and collectively learn of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakum الله خيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين kindly do not do not forget any of the Muslims around the world wherever they may be in whatever condition they may be suffering may Allah subhanahu wa taala alleviate their problems may Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, remove their problems and grant them ease جزاكم الله خيرا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين